The differential diagnosis of a patient presenting with diarrhea. A quick approach to diarrhea question stems and helpful even on the wards. For the sake of this video, we'll divide the symptoms according to time. So acute, that's less than 14 days, and chronic, basically anything above. Another way to classify, of course, would be based on pathophysiology. Now for acute, think of AAA batteries. You've got your AGE symptoms, which is acute gastroenteritis. So anything with nausea, vomiting, fever, and of course, diarrhea, it's abrupt, and you have abdominal pain. These are the major factors. Now within acute, we'll divide further based on passive pathophysiology. So that's watery and bloody. Watery diarrhea is non-inflammatory and includes viruses like rota, noro, and adeno. Very non-specific question stems with a history of unhygienic conditions as they're fecal orally transmitted. That's out of the way. Now comes Vibrio cholera. Keyword, rice water stool. Vibrio has a little brother, not really though, as enterotoxic E. coli, which has a cholera-like toxin that causes traveler's diarrhea. Other things causing watery diarrhea are staph, food poisoning, Clostridium perfinchens botulinum and difficile, Bacillus cereus, Bacillus cerei, since it's caused by uncooked rice, Giardia, after a camping trip, and Crypto, opportunistic with HIV. Now to differentiate between Giardia and E. coli, Giardia will present after a week and E. coli within a week. Now moving on to bloody diarrhea. We have the usual suspects, Shigella, which doesn't produce H2S, Salmonella, which does, causing typhoid enteric fever, Antamoeba histolytica, Compylobacter, and Yersinia, which causes pseudoappendicitis. Now, again, Shigella has a little brother too, but not really, by the way of enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which causes hemolytic uremic syndrome, bloody diarrhea seen in kids. It's Shigella's little brother as it produces a sugar-like toxin, whereas ETEC produces a cholera-like toxin. Bloody diarrhea is inflammatory and invasive. It disrupts the mucosa, so inflammatory and invasive goes inside and causes bleeding. <laughs> okay, another way to classify all of these pathogens and sort out this bacterial mess is to divide them by the number of hours they take to display their symptoms, i.e. the food poisoning countdown. Broadly, we'll divide it into less than 6 hours, 6 to 48 hours, and more than a day. Here, I want you to remember, my milk steak brings all the boys to the yard. Less than 6 hours, caused by bad milk and dairy, which is staph. Bacillus can also be present in this category. Steak, which is bad poultry, caused by salmonella. And bottles, strewn over the yard, so botulinum, causing flaccid paralysis. Alright, now moving on to chronic diarrhea, i.e. your bathroom habits have been pretty shit for a while. The broad subset here is malabsorption, where you're showing up all lethargic with steatoria, bloating, weight loss, and all things wrong. If you get a question stem like this or see a patient like this, think along the lines of celiac, tropical sprue, Whipple's disease with PAS positive, A beta lipoproteinemia, and also cystic fibrosis, which I didn't write here. Now, if you have all of these, but the questions also mention extraintestinal symptoms or systemic features and bloody diarrhea, think IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, so ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Now comes chronic diarrhea but with random ass symptoms and crampy pain. The misfits and afterthought stuff. So you have hep A, watch out for that shellfish, bloating after diarrhea, so lactose intolerance, vipoma, which is a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, adenoma, which causes hypokalemia, carcinoid with all the flushing, which can also be seen in pellagra and heart numb, so remember that, and Zollinger-Ellison syndrome with a bajillion ulcers. Lastly is the random stuff. So diarrhea with pneumonia, sink legionella, other random things like cow milk allergy and also necrotizing enterocolitis. So there you have it. That was a broad approach to diarrhea. Thanks for watching.